Hello and welcome to my channel. This is Lisa with Lisa's Faith and Budget Planning Channel. Um, I'm here today to do my first ever in a six or seven week, um, once a week series on um, a book I'm reading that I am really um, excited about, but truthfully being very vulnerable with myself. Um, let me pull up a, uh, the cover page for the book. It's called Healthy Me, Healthy Us. Talk, oops, I talked about this the other day. And um, yeah, I just finally finished the first chapter. It was very good. It was a lot to take in because um, the first chapter is on self-talk. Yes, <laughs> what we tell ourselves every day in our mind um, facing the world and what we think when we are put in certain situations and how we react to them in our self-talk. We talk to ourselves more in self-talk every day, <laughs> 4,000 times a day um, in making judgment calls on what we should or shouldn't do or what's good, what's right, um, or how comfortable we are to do these things. And um, yeah, and we talk ourselves into or out of all kinds of things all day long. <laughs> so some of our self-talk um, can be healthy and good and pushes us to move forward and do the right thing or some of our self-talk can be very negative and kind of nips things in the bud before we even get started and kind of forces us to stand back and go, Ooh, I don't know if I should or if I could, or, Ooh. you know, we have those uncomfortable feelings. And um, because our self-talk is the most conversation we have um, with anybody in ourselves and outside of ourselves, um, it's important to pay attention to that. Pay attention to what are you saying to yourself? What are you telling yourself? What are you being positive? Are you helping or are you hurting? Are you saying things that you wouldn't even say to your own best friend or your own children or your own spouse, but you're putting yourself down? So those are things to look out for. That's what I'm kind of learning in this kind of chapter of first chapter of self-talk. And I'm trying to get to some of the things I highlighted in here. Uh, what I found was really good is something that they said, um, and I'll, I'll quote from this a little bit, but the, it talks about, you know, the world being committed to the idea that self-worth, I'm quoting from um, the book here, is a consequence of achievement or performance. The idea of love being a gift that merely needs to be accepted is very difficult for our mind to wrap itself around. Um, we, in our nature, our sin nature, our human nature, our nature nature, <laughs> um, tend to think we have to earn love, that we have to earn a lot of things. And just to accept love as a gift from God, you know, just here, loving Him loving us first is really... It almost feels insulting, <laughs> which it shouldn't. You know, when you're first starting out, you're just like, you're trying to comprehend what Christianity is. And I'm like, no, I've got to do this. I, I got to earn that love. I got to do something. And you do all these works and you're like, he's sitting there going, no, 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 sit down. <laughs> Take a deep breath. I'm going to love you first and we'll walk us out together. It's very hard to grasp a God that loves us so unconditionally that we don't have to earn his love. It's, it's as much as we understand it, we can't quite comprehend it. So when we have our self-talk, sometimes it's us battling that urge or that thought of, I got to earn this love. I'm going to be self-deprecating because this isn't, you know, this doesn't make sense. And I, I see that in myself in what I'm reading here. Um, we have a hard time grasping, as Paul said to the Ephesians, I'm quoting again from the book, to grasp how wide and long, high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that suppresses all or surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. We cannot fathom in measurements. You cannot measure God's love. And we are creatures that love to measure everything. We compare ourselves to other 
women, we compare ourselves to other men, we compare ourselves to other people, other family, other status groups, other cultures. We are constantly in comparative mode. And to be just simply satisfied with where God has us and where he wants us is very difficult sometimes. So we have sometimes these negative thoughts. I'm trying to see, um, I did take a little quiz in here, um, which was really good. It was a very easy read. It was a good read. I enjoy it. Um, on talking about positive talk, talking about negative talk. Um, let's see, where's the test thing? So it gave you 10 questions of A, B, and C, multiple choice. And depending on what you had the majority of, and I was a majority B, six out of 10. Um, let's see what it said for that scoring. Uh, B, if you answer mainly B, your self-talk tends to be more negative than it is beneficial. While you're not likely to punish, I wouldn't punish myself. I am understanding in that, but I am a little more critical or negative and it's not very beneficial. <laughs> uh, I won't punish myself for very long with condemning internal dialogue. I would certainly, or you certainly are not using your self-talk to maximize your experience of profound significance. And yeah, my self-talk is definitely not enhancing anything um, that I'm doing or accomplishing with the glory of God. It's just, it's just not doing that. Um, and it says here, I, I am literally taking myself out of the full enjoyment of being loved in my core. And that is absolutely right. Allowing myself to be loved by someone else is actually pretty painful. It's actually physically painful. And to have this articulated back to me just in a simple 10 question survey is like, really? <laughs> really? <laughs> you can figure it out that easily. But it's so true. It is absolutely true. Um, so I'm going to keep going and learn more about my self-talk while I go through these chapters and, um, figure out what's going to happen next. Um, what else was in here that was interesting to me? I love this. Um, the best kind of self-talk is not hype or excessive positive. It did talk about how, you know, how you have those awesome quotes if you're into stickers, and you know in this channel I love stickers, um, if you're into um, those quote boxes and stuff, and people are always talking about love a good quote, you can get a great quote all day long, but if you're feeling crappy, there's not a quote out there that's going to lift you up that high um, that you really need. Um, the, your self-talk will always override any of those positive quotes, and you can definitely memorize them, you can recall them, you can actually put them around everywhere, but if you're anything like me, and I have, and you've probably seen this on my tablet, on my phone, it says pray first. And I still don't pray first. I try to work at it. I want to. Doesn't happen. So those things don't work for me. Seeing it around the house, I would actually just walk by and just tunnel, pit, tunnel vision past it as if it doesn't exist. I have quotes, not all over my house, but in a a handful of places like these here. I couldn't tell you what they said unless I sat there and read them. This I've, re I've actually read this one this morning. Um, and I try to read it every day, but I don't always read it every day just because it's displayed doesn't mean I'm going to read it. So here it says the best kind of self-talk is rational. It says I choose my responses and I'm quoting the book again. They don't choose me. I choose my responses. And that is very hard because I'm very reactive. You make me mad, I'm reactive mad. <laughs> I don't choose my response. I allow my response to choose me and that is not healthy. And this is part of gaining that step of healthy me in a relationship, in any, in all relationships that I have. So um, I choose my responses. They don't choose me. It says not... No, I'm sorry. No thought can dwell in my mind without my permission. I hadn't thought of it that way. There's sometimes thoughts that come to my mind. I'm like, I don't want this thought. I, I, this is horrible. I have to tell it. It doesn't have permission. It needs to go. I want to try that. I want to see how that works. Um, uh, my value does not equal my performance. 
That's a hard one to wrap my head around because our value in life from small children in elementary school where we're graded to stand up in front of teacher and students and give a book report, <laughs> that that means our value equals our performance. And if our performance isn't good, we don't get a good grade. We're taught very early that our value is in our performance. And yeah, that's not, <laughs> no, not, not in this healthy way. We're not teaching proper boundaries for those kind of mind thoughts and those self-talk. We need to teach those boundaries to ourselves and to our children and to our friends and family so they can have some healthy uh, input as well. So I really like that quote. Um, let's see if there was anything else. Uh, oh, I like this one as well. It says the key to changing your negative self-talk, quoting from the book, into the best kind of self-talk is to experience God's love deep down in your soul. And yeah, allowing God to love you and really exposing all that icky, even though he knows it's there, even though he knows that sin and he's working with you and he's helping you. And sometimes we still don't allow him in those private, dark corners of our spaces. And um, we think we're hiding it from him and we're not. We're just hiding it from ourselves. And he's waiting for us to be ready and willing to go to him and say, Dad, I have this junk help. That's all he really wants from us. And um, yeah, God's love is to feel it deep in our soul, exposing everything we can possibly expose to him. That's huge. <laughs> that is huge. That's a deep, hard truth to really bring in to ourselves and allow God to go there. But when we're vulnerable and when we obey and when we are led and guided by him, it, I bet you anything, it's probably the most beautiful transformation of your entire life once that happens. It's just, yeah, just the thought of that is just beautiful. <laughs> so that is the uh, chapter one of um, Healthy Me, Healthy Us by Les Perot and Leslie Perot. And um, I really like it so far. Um, it's a good, if you're looking for self-help kind of thing, um, something motivational, something to help you with negative self-talk. Um, there's a whole lot more in this. Uh, chapter two is called uh, Moving Past Your Past. So um, when you start learning about your self-talk and talking about your self-talk and recognizing where, what it is and that it's negative or if you need help or whatever, once you kind of get that started, you can start applying where the negative stuff talk came from or maybe why it started in the first place. Um, many family traditions or family um, attitudes and stuff like that carry on for generations because we don't pay attention to our self-talk on what we've heard just by the people we live with growing up. So yeah, I think um, chapter the next chapter too is going to be excellent and I can't wait to get to it and get back to you guys and tell you what I think of that and how that ties in with the self-talk. Hopefully they go in further and explain even more to it. So anyways, that's all I have for tonight. Um, I hope you like this video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these, I will be doing this specific one. I think I'm going to do it every Wednesday and post it in the evenings on Wednesday evenings once a week and for about six or seven weeks. I think there's six chapters and a closing or something like that. So that's how that's going to be done. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.